In this video we are going to graph some lines by plotting points. So we're going to kind of look at this as an introduction to graphing lines. And just start with very basic, some, some very easy examples. Um, we'll do three examples and progress to some more difficult examples as we go along. So first off, let's talk about what we're doing a little bit here. So you're going to be given an equation, say something like uh, y, or x plus y equals 5. Now, what's different about this equation than other equations you've seen, probably at this point, is that you've got two different variables, x and y. Maybe up to this point you've only been working with equations that just have one variable, like x, and you're trying to get x by itself and find the value of x to find the solution. Well, with two variables, it's kind of the same thing, except, uh, you know, it's, it's the same in that you're trying to find a solution. You're trying to find numbers for x and y that add to 5. The difference is you have to find a number for x and y. Well, with this equation, you know, it's, it's not too hard, okay? Let's think of two numbers that add to be 5. All right, so let's say x is 1 and y is 4. Well, that would make this equation true. 1 plus 4 would equal 5. So 1 and 4 is a solution of this equation. Well, you're probably thinking, well, there's other solutions too, right? We could have x could be 3 and y could be 2. x could be 0, y could be 5. Let's get fancy. x could be negative 1, y could be 6. Negative 1 plus 6 would be 5. Let's go, let's get even crazier here. How about a half? If x is a half, y would be 5 and a half. And that, or, okay, let's try it. How about 4 and a half? Would you buy that? We don't want to get that crazy. We want to keep it a solution. So x would be 4 and a half, and that would add to be 5. So the difference here is that there are infinitely many solutions. We could sit here all day and come up with different um, pairs of numbers that add to 5. That's the difference between the other type of equation we were doing where we were just solving for x and we were getting one solution. Okay, so if there's infinitely many solutions, how do we write them all down? How do we say what all the solutions are? Well, we can't. So we're going to draw a picture of those solutions. So that's where this coordinate plane comes in over here. Hopefully you're, you understand how to plot points. This is your y-axis right here, and this is your x-axis. So your x numbers are represented left and right, and your y, your y numbers are represented up and down. So this first solution we came up with, 1, 4, we're going to write it like this, parenthesis 1, comma, 4. And that solution of two different numbers is going to be represented by one point, the point 1, 4 which means x is 1, so starting from the middle, we're going to go over to 1 on the x, and then we're going to go up 4, and that's this point right there. That dot represents the point 1, 4. So that dot represents the solution, 1, 4. Let's do the next one, 3, 2. So we're going to go over 3, up 2, and make a dot. There's the point 3, 2. And the rest of these, we're going to do these as points. 0, 5, negative 1, 6, and a half, 4 and a half. So when we're done, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points on our grid. I'm not going to write these ordered pairs over here anymore because I think I'm going to run out of room. So let's keep going here. We got the point. Um, well, maybe I'll do some fancy colors. So this point right here, 0, 5, would be... 0 on the x, so not left or right at all, and then just up 5, so that would be right there where that green one is. Next one we'll do in purple, negative 1, 6, so negative 1, up 6. And then let's do a light blue here, 1 half, 4 and a half. So over just a half, and then up 4 and a half, so it's be right in the middle of this box. Okay, so hopefully you notice something. All these points are in a straight line. And let's say your neighbor was doing this same problem and they came up with some other points. They can't let's say they came up with the point, oops, sorry. They came up with the point 4 1.
Okay, that's a different point than 1, 4 because the x's and y's are switched. But it's still a solution because if x was 4 and y was 1, that would still add to 5. So that would be a solution. So let's plot that point. If I go over 4, up 1, right there, still in the line. So to finish, what I do is I connect all these points. Now when I'm connecting these points, I am graphing every single point that is a solution to this equation. We could sit here all day and come up with all these different uh, points that would work. And so we'd be sitting here, we'd be doing uh, a point there, it'd be two, three, and maybe we'd do some halves and some decimals. And pretty soon we would be point, 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 point. We'd be filling all these in. And pretty soon we'd have this dense filled in line. And that line is made up of points. And those points are the solutions or the x's and y's that add to 5. So this this line that's made up of infinitely many points becomes a picture of all the solutions of x plus y equals 5. Much different than the other types of equations you were doing because they only had one solution. This has infinitely many solutions and those solutions are represented by these guys which are called ordered pairs ordered pairs. It takes two numbers to make one solution and one dot and then you have infinitely many dots that will work. Okay so hopefully that gives you an idea of what we're doing here. Let's try another example. We'll try um, let's try one that the solutions maybe are not so easy to figure out like two numbers that add to five. That was kinda easy to figure out. Let's try one like um, x plus 2y equals 6. Well, we might be able to figure some out. Um, we, could, we could record our results in a t-chart like this, x, y. Now, the thing is, um, you can pick whatever number you want for x or y. Whatever you want. It's kind of a cool thing. So a good number to pick is zero. Not a lot of people like zero, but zero is really easy to do arithmetic on, you know, add and subtract with. So what you do is you pick whatever number you want for either x or y. So I'm just going to pick x to be zero. Then I'm going to take this number zero. I'm going to do this in red. And I'm going to put it over here where the x is. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. Except instead of x, I'm going to put the number in that I picked. Now I have an equation that only has one variable just y. I just have 2y equals 6. So I can solve that. I divide both sides by 2 and I get y equals 3. So that 3 is the y value that goes with this x value. That makes a point. That's one of our points right there. 0, 3. That's going to be one dot. So let's go ahead and plot that. 0, 3. 0, 3 is right there. Well one point's not enough to make a line. Okay, We're going to need some more numbers. So let's pick a different number. You can pick whatever you want, okay? Let's say I'm going to pick y to be 4. I just, I don't know, I like 4. Okay, so then I picked y to be 4 this time. I could pick either x or y, whatever I want. So since I picked y to be 4, I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to put it where the y is, okay? So I'm going to rewrite my original equation down here, x plus 2y equals 6. Now this time when I write it, I'm going to put the 4 where the y is. So x plus 2 times 4 equals 6. Now I figure it out. So I have x plus 8 equals 6. Now I'm going to minus 8. See, I've only got one variable. I've only got x because I put a number in for y. So I can figure out what x is. x would be negative 2. That's the number that I put up here with the y value. So then that makes my second point. Negative 2, 4 would be right there. Okay? Now it only takes two points to determine a line. There's only one line that goes through these two points. So technically I could stop. If I was on a pinch for time on the test or something, I'd just go do these two points. But it's always good to pick a third point to make sure you haven't made a mistake. If I've made a mistake on one of these two points, I couldn't tell. But if I do a third point, and it lines up with these two, then I'm really confident that uh, I have the correct line. If my third point comes out over here somewhere and makes a triangle, I, I know I made a mistake and I can go fix it. All right, so let's pick x to be 1. They're not all going to come out nice, so let's say I pick x to be 1. Go back to my original equation. 
Now I'm going to put a 1 in for x. So I get 1 plus 2y equals 5. So now i got to solve for y. So I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. Uh, oh, I wanted to make it... Oh, sorry, I messed up. Let's go back. 2x plus 2y equals 6. I put a 5 there. I think I was a little ahead of myself. So x plus 2y equals 6. So this was supposed to be a 6. Sorry about that. And then minus 1, I get 5. Okay? And then divide both sides by 2. And I get y equals 2 and a half. Don't panic. That's okay. We can graph 2 and a half. 2 and a half. So over 1, up 2 and a half. Over 1, up 2 and a half. Look at that. It's still in line with these other two points, so I'm pretty confident. My last step, all I have to do is connect these points, draw my line. Make sure you put little arrows on the end of your line to show that the line goes on forever both directions, and uh, you'll be good to go.